I do not wish women to have power over men, but over themselves. Strengthen the female mind by enlarging it, and there will be an end to blind obedience. The more equality there is established among men, the more virtue and happiness will reign in society. Only that education deserves emphatically to be termed cultivation of the mind which teaches young people how to begin to think. The beginning is always today. Let woman share the rights and she will emulate the virtues of man, for she must grow more perfect when emancipated. Women do not want power over men, they want power over themselves. When we feel deeply, we reason profoundly. Men, in general, seem to employ their reason to justify prejudices, rather than to root them out. It is justice, not charity, which is wanting in the world. Taught from infancy that beauty is woman's scepter, the mind shapes itself to the body, and roaming round its gilt cage, only seeks to adorn its prison. No man chooses evil because it's evil. He only mistakes it for happiness, the good he seeks. Men and women must be educated, in a great degree, by the opinions and manners of the society they live in. Women are systematically degraded by receiving the trivial attentions which men think it manly to pay to the sex, when, in fact, men are insultingly supporting their own superiority. The mind will ever be unstable that has only prejudices to rest on. My own sex, I hope, will excuse me, if I treat them like rational creatures, instead of flattering their fascinating graces, and viewing them as if they were in a state of perpetual childhood, unable to stand alone. Life cannot be seen by an unmoved spectator. Till women are more rationally educated, the progress in human virtue and improvement in knowledge must receive continual checks. I never wanted but your heart that gone, you have nothing more to give. The appetites will rule if the mind is vacant. True happiness must arise from well-regulated affections, and an affection includes a duty. We never do anything well unless we love it for its own sake. The absurd duty, too often inculcated, of obeying a parent only on account of his being a parent, shackles the mind, and prepares it for a slavish submission to any power but reason. Weakness may excite tenderness and gratify the arrogant pride of man, but the lordly caresses of a protector will not gratify a noble mind that pants for and deserves to be respected. Fondness is a poor substitute for friendship. Strengthen the female mind by enlarging it, and there will be an end to blind obedience, but as blind obedience is ever sought for by power, tyrants and sensualists are in the right when they endeavor to keep women in the dark because, the former only want slaves, and the latter a plaything. The two sexes mutually corrupt and improve each other, the being cannot be termed rational or virtuous, who obeys any authority, but that of reason. Situation seems to be the mold in which men's characters are formed. Judicious books enlarge the mind and improve the heart. Friendship is a serious affection, the most sublime of all affections because it is founded on principle and cemented by time. We reason deeply when we forcibly feel. When a man seduces a woman, it should, I think, be termed a left-handed marriage. It is vain to expect virtue from women till they are in some degree independent of men. Women all want to be ladies, which is simply to have nothing to do, but listlessly to go they scarcely care where, for they cannot tell what. How can a rational being be ennobled by anything that is not obtained by its own exertions? 
to be a good mother, a woman must have sense, and that independence of mind which few women possess who are taught to depend entirely on their husbands. Meek wives are, in general, foolish mothers, wanting their children to love them best, and take their part, in secret, against the father, who is held up as a scarecrow. Man, praise on man, and you mourn for the idle tapestry that decorated a gothic pillar, and the dronish bell that summoned the fat priest to prayer. You mourn for the empty pageant of a name, when slavery flaps her wing. Why is our fancy to be appalled by terrific perspectives of a hell beyond the grave? Hell, stalks abroad, the lash resounds on the slave's naked sides, and the sick wretch, who can no longer earn the sour bread of unremitting labor, steals to a ditch to bid the world along, good night. Men endeavor to sink us still lower, merely to render us alluring objects for a moment, and women, intoxicated by the adoration which men, under the influence of their senses, pay them, do not seek to obtain a durable interest in their hearts, or to become the friends of the fellow creatures who find amusement in their society. Make women rational creatures, and free citizens, and they will quickly become good wives, that is, if men do not neglect the duties of husbands and fathers. Let us, my dear contemporaries, arise above such narrow prejudices. If wisdom be desirable on its own account, if virtue, to deserve the name, must be founded on knowledge, let us endeavor to strengthen our minds by reflection till our heads become a balance for our hearts. Some women govern their husbands without degrading themselves because intellect will always govern. We cannot, without depraving our minds, endeavor to please a lover or husband, but in proportion as he pleases us. What, but the rapacity of the only men who exercised their reason, the priests, secured such vast property to the church, when a man gave his perishable substance to save himself from the dark torments of purgatory, and found it more convenient to indulge his depraved appetites, and pay an exorbitant price for absolution, than listen to the suggestions of reason, and work out his own salvation. In a word, was not the separation of religion from morality the work of the priests? Every political good carried to the extreme must be productive of evil. A modest man is steady, an humble man timid, and a vain one presumptuous. It appears to me impossible that I should cease to exist, or that this active, restless spirit, equally alive to joy and sorrow, should only be organized dust ready to fly abroad the moment the spring snaps, or the spark goes out, which kept it together. Surely something resides in this heart that is not perishable and life is more than a dream. When poverty is more disgraceful than even vice, is not morality cut to the quick? To improve both sexes they ought, not only in private families, but in public schools, to be educated together. If marriage be the cement of society, mankind should all be educated after the same model, or the intercourse of the sexes will never deserve the name of fellowship. The divine right of husbands, like the divine right of kings, may, it is hoped, in this enlightened age, be contested without danger. Virtue can only flourish among equals. The power of generalizing ideas, of drawing comprehensive conclusions from individual observations, is the only acquirement, for an immortal being, that really deserves the name of knowledge. It is time to effect a revolution in female manners, time to restore to them their lost dignity. It is time to separate unchangeable morals from local manners. Age demands respect, youth, love. Good habits, imperceptibly fixed, are far preferable to the precepts of reason. Women ought to have representatives, instead of being arbitrarily governed without any direct share allowed them in the deliberations of government. Independence I have long considered as the grand blessing of life, the basis of every virtue and independence I will ever secure by contracting my wants, though I were to live on a barren heath. 
Friendship is a serious affection, the most sublime of all affections because it is founded on principle and cemented by time. The very reverse may be said of love. In a great degree, love and friendship cannot subsist in the same bosom, even when inspired by different objects they weaken or destroy each other, and for the same object can only be felt in succession. The vain fears and fond jealousies, the winds which fan the flame of love, when judiciously or artfully tempered, are both incompatible with the tender confidence and sincere respect of friendship. Which quote did you like the most? Share your opinion in the comments below. Subscribe and don't miss out the chance to see the next video.